Vince19 back again, and welcome to episode 2 of my new series, Statistical Side Quests. In my number crunching and data analysis, I often come across statistics that, while very interesting, don't quite rise to the level of having an entire video framed around them. So while they can't be part of my channel's main quest line, they're certainly worthy of a side quest. Today we're going to look at 5 stats that range from game development costs to the most impressive game attach rate in gaming history. Let's do it. Two hundred and seventy-six thousand. That's the number of copies of Soma that Frictional Games said that they needed to sell in order to break even on the project. At an original retail price of $30, that puts the game's development budget somewhere around $8 million. Now it's pretty rare that a game developer talks about real numbers, so this is worth exploring for a minute. The company released a blog post in September of 2016 saying that they had in fact broken 450,000 copies sold across all platforms. This means that they easily broke even on the game and may have pocketed over $5 million on the project. I was late to the party on this one, but Soma was one of the best games I played in 2018. A game about philosophical coin tosses that I will not soon forget. By the way, I played that game on safe mode, with the monsters kept at arm's length, and I recommend that you do the same thing to get the maximum enjoyment. Two hundred and seventy-two. That's the average number of days that it took for a game console to have its first price cut during the fifth generation of video gaming. And from my data analysis, the fifth generation of gaming was the most competitive in gaming history. Easily. Check this out, here are the consoles of the fifth generation along with the number of days that it took for each of them to have its first big price cut. And the percentage is the percent size of that price cut once it hit. These are cuts that came fast and came big. And when we compare the averages of the fifth generation to other generations, it's not even close. The average cut came much faster in terms of days, and the average cut was also bigger than any other generation. Two metrics that indicate huge levels of competition. For me, the fifth generation of gaming was the best in history. It's my personal favorite. There were so many new ideas, and each console was so different than the next. And come on, it had the 3DO. What is not to love? Ever since the fifth generation, it just feels to me that things have tended to go a little bit more vanilla. Not that things have gotten worse, but the consoles have gotten more samey. Seventeen. That's the number of E3 Game Critic Awards that the Xbox 360 was able to tally during its active life. And if that number doesn't sound all that impressive, well, it really is. Take a look at this. This is the total number of E3 Game Critic Awards won by each of the major consoles over the last 20 years. The 360 is head and shoulders above the rest of the pack. However, the Switch could make a serious run at this thing. Nintendo's hybrid system has already won 9 awards, and it's just getting started. But looking back at some of the award-winning games on the 360, these awards were extremely well-deserved. The original Mass Effect was responsible for three of those 17 awards, and what a damn game that was. 1.02 That was the attach rate for Zelda Breath of the Wild on the Nintendo Switch in the USA in March of 2017, the month that the system launched. And it means that for every Switch that was sold in the USA during that month, there were 1.02 copies of Zelda Breath of the Wild purchased. Getting a little more specific, 906,000 Switches were sold in the US that month, and 925,000 copies of Zelda were purchased. Now this does not include those copies that were sold on the Wii U, this is strictly Switch sales. This is incredibly noteworthy, and maybe one of the only times that a game had an attach rate above 1 for any length of time. Nintendo explained that this likely happened because some people were buying multiple copies of Zelda, a regular version and a special edition. However it happened, it's going to go down in history, at least on channels like mine, as being one of the most unique situations in gaming history. Can you think of any other game for which something like this happened? I'm struggling to come up with anything. 1.03 
43. That's the percentage of GameCube games that were released in the months of October, November, and December. I realize that this is an odd statistic, but I was curious as to how many games are released during the holiday period versus other times of the year. And the answer, at least on the GameCube, is nearly half of the total library. That's even higher than I thought it would be. For comparison's sake, 40% of Nintendo 64 games were released during those three months. I suppose the next thing to do would be to look at other gaming consoles to see if Sony and Microsoft love the holiday months as much as Nintendo does. But that's a question for another video. I plan on running this series for a long time, and I plan to make adjustments along the way to make it more fun and interesting to both you and me. So if you have any suggestions, I'm all ears. Thank you, and see you next time.